Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. We pray that today's message impacts your life. Let's get ready for this service. Hello, everyone. We are so glad to be with you today. And today I have a special guest. It's my wife, Lisa. I'm so glad to be able to do this teaching with you. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here with you, and I'm glad to be here with you. And you know what? You had a birthday this week. Yep. The big five three. Wow. 53 years old. Yes. We started this church when I uh, I was 36 years old. Wow. And now we're 15 years into it. Yes. I'm going into our 16th year pretty soon in June. And this has been like really the best 15 years of my life yes. and the best 30 years being married to you. Yay. 53. Yes. Wow. That's right. And so we want to also thank everybody for sending the birthday wishes. And we even had some people send um, some food and, and cake and stuff. So yeah. thank you so thank much. You we so love much. you. And I even got some brand new shoes today. I don't Woo! think you'll see them. <laughs> but I want to thank every one of you for being such a great family. Yes. We've, had, we've had a really great week. This week, you know, last week we had a fire. But the yeah. church responded so oh, well. Yeah. We, you know, the next day, you know what we did? We gave out more food yes. than we really have ever given out. There was a line across, uh, right around mm. the block where people were coming to get food, and we're able to not only give them food, we're able to minister to them. Right. So right. what could have turned into like a really bad moment actually turned into a victory. That's and today right. we're going to be talking about breakthrough. breakthrough. It's going to be a real strong word we're using today. And this is a statement that we're making today. Today is the day of your breakthrough. breakthrough. Today yeah. is the day of your breakthrough. And, and we're going to dive into the story, a story about a lady called the lady with the issue of blood. Right. But before we dive into that story, let's talk about breakthrough. Get your pens and papers out. I really believe this. By the time you're done with this message, you're going to have the faith, faith to face the challenges that you're in right now yeah. And get a breakthrough in them. Yes. We serve a God that specializes in breakthrough. breakthrough. So let's go to the definition first. All right. Breakthrough. An instant of achieving success in a particular sphere or activity. The overcoming of a obstruction, restriction, or stalemate. What, do you, what, do you, what stands out on this? Uh, uh, just on the definition for you. On the definition. So... What stands out to me is the overcoming of an obstruction, a challenge, a restriction, something that has stopped you, a stalemate, a stalemate where there's a standoff and there's no movement, there's no action, there's no advance on either side. It's like it's a defeat, it's a failure, but it's, it's overcoming. Breakthrough is overcoming. It's breaking through that stalemate. It's breaking through that restriction, that obstruction that has stopped you, hindered you. That's what I get out of this. And, and you know what I get about, about it is an instant yes. of achieving success in a sphere in or, a, or activity. Well, that it could, breakthrough can happen in an instant. There's yes. a moment so good. of breakthrough. Yeah. And today could be that moment of breakthrough for you. I don't know what area you need a breakthrough in. It could be your finances. It could be your relationship. Yeah. It could be maybe your emotions. I don't know what area you're fighting in right now. And you're saying, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in a stalemate. Right. Our country, our world is in a stalemate with the with coronavirus. Yeah, you're right. But I really believe that this is a prophetic word for us today where God is saying, it's not coronavirus time. It's breakthrough, breakthrough time. time. God is ready right now. He, he is ready. He is setting us up for a breakthrough. This word is not meant to just do a, not to just just give a word to get people like motivated. No, this is a prophetic word right. that right. we need to grab onto and say to ourselves. Today is my time for a breakthrough. Right. And we're, we're going to find the, the keys to these breakthroughs in a story about this lady that's called the lady with the issue of blood. Right. She's very famous. In, in matter of, she might be one of the most famous ladies in the whole Bible. And I really believe this portion of scripture is probably taught more in churches all over the world. That's true. And this story is, is, well, is, known. is yeah. well known. So this lady, but it doesn't give a name. Yeah. And what I want to do right now is, is go into that story. It doesn't give her name, just a lady with the issue right. of blood. And, and the reason it has no name, this is the reason. So we would put our name in it. 
Yes. It's her name, the woman. <clears throat> you could say the man. It could be the marriage. It could be the couple. Right. It could be a single. Put your name in the story. All the stories in the Bible are meant to be personalized. Right. Let's dive into the story. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a success. I mean, no, no, a breakthrough seminar. Yes. And she actually, this lady She's is our third our guest teacher. speaker. Yes, she is. She's going to be teaching us and giving us advice on how to get a breakthrough because she got the biggest breakthrough in her life. Right. And if she got a breakthrough, we can get a breakthrough. That's this right. is your word today. That's right. So from this lady, we want to go to what advice she has to give us and give you. So advice number one, what is advice number one? Don't give up before the breakthrough. Mm. Don't give up. Advice number one, she gives it. Don't give up before your breakthrough. She could have easily gave up. Let's look at the story. It starts off with her challenge. It starts off with her problem. Matthew, my Mark 5, 25. Mark 5, 25. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with a constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything that she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Think about this. If anyone had an excuse to quit, it was her. But there's a problem. Quitters never get breakthroughs. No. Starters aren't necessarily going to get breakthroughs. But finishers get breakthroughs. And those that persevere get breakthroughs. Yes. She could have quit. She had many reasons. Number one, constant bleeding. Mm. That means for 12 years, her problem was consistent. Chronic. She never got a break. Imagine living a life for 12 years without a break. She went on, this, the scripture went on to say, and she suffered with constant bleeding. Yes. And then it says she suffered at the hands of doctors. Right. She would go to doctor after doctor after doctor, and they would promise her, pro they would promise her, we can help you. Yeah. But all they would do is hurt her. Mm -hmm. And for 12 years, it was one disappointment after another disappointment after another disappointment, not for 30 days, for 12 years. That adds up to around 13,800 days wow. of constant bleeding, constant pressure, constant pain, and constant, constant disappointment. Yes. But it went deeper than that. Yes, it did. In, in, in her society, she was considered an outcast. Anyone that had a bleeding problem was considered unclean. Right. Talking about quarantine, because right now, <laughs> if you have coronavirus, <laughs> or you know someone that has coronavirus, Right now, you have to be in quarantine for at least 14 days. Yeah. It would be the same thing with this lady. She lived a quarantine life. life. She had a bleeding problem, and the laws of the land, just like we have laws right now referring to coronavirus, the laws referred to her as unclean. Yes. And anyone that touched her would have to go in quarantine. Mm. Everything that she touched would be considered unclean. unclean. So she not only was bleeding, she was sick, she, and she suffered at the hands of doctors, spent, all her, spent money. all her money. She was broke, but she was also lonely. Yeah. She had no friends. She couldn't have any friends. She couldn't be around them. She couldn't go to church. Wow. Even in the church, they wouldn't allow her in the church. What about her family? Her family. If she was married, her husband would divorce her because of her being unclean. So she probably had a divorce on her record and she was rejected. Think about this. Everywhere. For 12 years living in isolation, living in quarantine, in poverty, all by yourself, and constant suffering. Suffering and pain. If anyone could have quit, given up, thrown, the, thrown in the towel, it should have been her. That's and nice. this is what she's saying. I didn't quit. Why are you fascinated about quitting? Hmm. Fantasizing about quitting. It's not time to quit because if you quit, you know what happens? Nothing changes. Only this is also going to happen. It's only going to get worse. And that's what happened to her. Yeah. It never got better. 12 years of it not becoming better. What do you think about that, Lise? It's sad because, you know, we feel in this time with the coronavirus, um, some type of isolation. But with that lady, there was no one. She couldn't be around anyone. And she... She pressed through 
but she she pressed through for 12 years with the same condition and it only got worse like you said and only those that don't give up will see a breakthrough only those that don't give up she didn't give up after 12 and years I think she, she didn't write give that up. down listen this is the point she, she her advice number 1 is don't give up before your breakthrough right don't and give then, up and then and then there's then this this is this is a statement you got to write it down. Only those that don't give up will see a breakthrough. That's right. So we, we, can't that give that, we can't give up. In Galatians six nine it says, "And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up." The Bible clearly says, "In due season there will be a moment, there will be an instant where you will have that breakthrough." But the key is, you cannot give up. You cannot give up. You have to go through that process. You have to go through it until the due season comes. Don't give up, and you will. You will reap if you don't give up. No, God is promising right now a breakthrough if you don't give up. Right. God is building us up. He's building our character. He's allowing us to learn how to fight through challenges. Yes. And, right. and, he, and he says this. If you don't give up, you, don't give you up. will reap. You will get a, a harvest. Victory. You will get a victory. <laughs> You will get a breakthrough. Yes. It's a guarantee. That's Don't right. give up. The lady got a breakthrough, and she's sharing with us. She's right now holding a breakthrough seminar. That's right. So advice number two. Advice number two. It says, place your faith in Jesus as your source of breakthrough. He is your source. Without Jesus, there is no story to tell. There is no breakthrough coming. Now, she, she has a problem for 12 years. Yeah. The doctors couldn't fix it. Her money couldn't fix it. Her husband couldn't fix it. Friends and relatives, society had no answer yeah. for her problem. But one day, she heard about Jesus. That's right. The cornerstone of this story is Jesus, the source. Place your faith in Jesus, the source of your right. breakthrough. Without Jesus in this story... It's just a pity party. It's just a sad story. Yeah. Nothing's changing. Right. She remains in her constant bleeding. That's right. Everyone remains in their constant yeah. depression, in their constant fear. Yeah. They remain in their challenge. They remain unsaved. They remain in bondage. But because of Jesus being in the middle of the story, and she looked at him as her source of breakthrough, yes. she got a breakthrough. Got but let's look at how she even learned about Jesus. All right. It says in Mark 5, 27, she had heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. But the key here is that she heard about Jesus. And this is the same way that we can build our faith. You can build your faith in Jesus as your source of breakthrough is because you've heard. She heard what he had done for others, what he had done miracles for others, healings for others. And she thought to herself, I can get a breakthrough because I've heard about what Jesus has done. And she never actually, this might have been the first time she saw Jesus. Yeah. So her faith, it wasn't based on what she saw. And that's, and that's why but, but the scripture says, we walk by faith, not by yeah. sight. And faith comes by hearing. And faith comes by hearing. Right. We build our faith through our ears. She had open ears. And what's, what's great about this, she was still believing for a breakthrough. Yes, she was. And her faith was built by hearing stories of other people that got breakthroughs. That's right. And maybe someone told her, hey, I was in the same condition as you. I was a leper, an outcast, and Jesus healed me. And maybe she heard another story of a man that couldn't walk yeah. in the same condition as her, ostracized from society. Right. And he says, I can now walk. You knew me. I was a cripple. And maybe she heard another story. I was dead. And Jesus resurrected me. And as she was hearing these stories, she goes, whoa, there's a source of breakthrough. And it built her faith. Yes. And what she did, which is really cool, and this is what we should do. She put herself in the middle of all those other stories. And she said, if he healed her, him, and he healed her, and he raised that person from the dead, 
He right. can do it for me. Right. And now she's preaching. Don't forget, place your faith in Jesus Christ as the source of your breakthrough. Right. And I want you to know that one of the names of God is the master of breakthroughs. Wow, that's powerful. That is. Say that, say, that, say that again. One of the names of God is the master of breakthroughs. It says right here in 2 Samuel 5.20. So David came to Baal Perizim and he defeated them there and said, the Lord has broken through my enemies before me. And let's stop there. So in this portion of scripture, it's saying David's in a battle. Yeah. And there's an enemy line. Yes. They have a defense. And unless they could get through that enemy line, there's no there's victory. There's no victory coming. And they could have been at a standoff days. Yeah. We it could know. be weeks. Right. It could have been months in the battle. And then he proclaimed something. The Lord has broken through my enemies before me. Yes. There's always so an enemy in front of your breakthrough. Come on. In front of your success. And it's there to hold you back. And unless we break through, it will hold us back for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. The challenge you're facing now is meant for you with Christ to get a breakthrough. Break but it goes on to say it reveals a name of God. Let's read it. Master of breakthroughs. So he had named that place, Baal Perizim, master of breakthroughs. He named that place. Master of breakthroughs, because that's where he got his breakthrough, and that's the name of God. He is the master of breakthroughs, of your breakthrough, of our breakthrough, of her breakthrough. This is what God is saying. I'm the master of breakthroughs. I, see, I'm a source of breakthroughs, but I'm master at this too. Yes. And yes. God doesn't just want, he doesn't just want us to get a breakthrough. He wants us to master breakthroughs. Come on. See, a master, you know what he wants to do? Another name for a master is teacher. Yes. I'm a teacher Teach of breakthroughs. Teach us how to master it. They're, they're, in, the martial arts, in the martial arts area, they have, they have masters. Yes. And what they do is they teach people to master the skill. Right. And what God wants to do is get us a breakthrough and then get us to be masters of breakthroughs. Isn't that a great name to associate ourselves with? Who do you serve? I serve the master of breakthroughs. And whatever I'm facing right now, I'm going to master it, and I'm going to get a breakthrough at, with my faith in Jesus, in Jesus Christ. Yes, that's so good. And with our faith and knowing that he's the master of our breakthroughs, guess what else he has? Yes. Promise, a promise for us. Okay. God, What's a promise, Lisa? It says God promises us that everyone, you, me, everyone. her, that places their faith in Jesus will experience victory and breakthrough. What a, what a wonderful promise. I would write this stuff down because I want to get this in my, in my spirit. Why do I need it? Because to get a breakthrough, it's a battle. Yes. These it's a are, fight. These are the instructions. Most people don't live a breakthrough life. Mm. They live a breakdown life. Oh, no. Constant one breakdown after yeah. another breakdown after another breakdown. One sad story after another sad story. They don't live a breakthrough life. You were created. I was created to live a breakthrough life yes, because we're yes. under the master of breakthroughs. Yes. That's yes, who's leading that's us. So good. But let's look at the promise because the promise is found in scripture. Yes. And the promise again is God promises that everyone, everyone that places their faith in Jesus Christ will experience victory and breakthrough. And breakthrough. Second, faith in Christ. Second Corinthians 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Great scripture. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to him who always leads us in victory through Christ. So God uses us to spread his knowledge everywhere like a sweet smelling perfume. He always leads us to victory through Christ. Through to triumph, overcoming victory. This is ours and it's a promise and it's through Jesus Christ and it doesn't stop there. He wants us to spread this knowledge, the mastery of this skill, the mastery of breakthrough, the master of breakthroughs wants us to be that sweet smelling aroma. What is a sweet smelling aroma? It's like well, a it's, perfume. It's something, it's something that's attractive. Yeah. And what God's saying that, your story might not be very attractive right now. Mm. What you're going through might not be very attractive. It might actually be repulsive. It might. Everybody's running away from Reject, you right now. Rejection. And God says, that's okay. Follow me. Follow my lead. 
victory and breakthrough. This is a key to getting victory and breakthrough is being able to be led into victory. Yes. Be led into breakthrough. And the scripture promises us, the scripture promises us, it says this, who always leads us in victory. Yes. Through Christ. Yes. I love this. Through Christ. Always this. And then after we get a victory, we get a breakthrough, then he shares us with the world. And how does he do that? We share our story. Right. We share, like this lady yeah, right now, glory. with the lady of the issue of blood. She was, it was, she was an, un, a person that was considered unclean. Everyone pushed her away. And now everybody's going to her story to get inspiration and to find Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. And that's what God's going to do with us. He's going to use us to spread the knowledge of Jesus Christ all over the world. Wherever and it's we a go. sweet smell of perfume because our story becomes um, an attraction yes, to Jesus to Christ. To Jesus, who is our source yes. of breakthrough. Okay, so I want to know what else is. Do we have another advice here uh, from this lady? Advice number three. Okay, so. Tell us what advice number So three. we just went through advice number one. Don't give up before your breakthrough. Right. If it feels tough, you don't have an option. We have an option. Quit and stay in the mess. That's true. Or fight and not give up and overcome. Your marriage can be dissolved or you can fight for it. Right. You can stay in the addiction or you can resist it. You can overcome the depression or stay depressed for the rest of your life. But the idea is God is saying, I'm the master of breakthroughs. Let's do this. The second thing she said advice is place your faith in Jesus Christ as your the source. As the source of your breakthrough. Yes, that's so important. My source was my breakthrough. My source is Jesus Christ, who always leads me to victory. He's the master of breakthroughs. Right. And advice number three, which is our final advice, make sure your thoughts, words, and actions are in agreement with your breakthrough. Right. I want you to say, it's, it's, it's three in one. It's almost like Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Thoughts, words, words. and actions. Action. Make sure they don't contradict themselves hmm. because as long as those three are in agreement, there's nothing in the world that you cannot experience a breakthrough in. Right. Most people have a struggle with, agree with having these three in unity. Right. And unless these three are in unity, there is no breakthrough. Thoughts, that's the vision. Words, what you're saying about the vision. And action, the action you're taking on the vision. Let's look at the scripture and we're going to see these three attributes or these three pieces or these three, um, I would say, strategies or tactics or, or pieces or weapons that we use together yeah. to get a breakthrough. In Mark 5, 28, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. What I see there is she thought... Mind. Number two, I will be healed. Her words. The words that you speak to others are powerful, but they're not as powerful as the words you're speaking to yourself. Could it be that your greatest enemy is not someone on the outside or something on the outside uh, or, or something on the outside or the devil? Could it be our greatest enemy is our own personal self talk? Mm. And then we see she sees herself touching the hem of the garment. But there's a problem. If she doesn't actually do it, hmm. there's no miracle. Right. There's no breakthrough. Right. So let's dive into this just a little bit more. And what's the statement that we're making right now? Well, the statement is breakthrough always starts in the mind. Always starts there. So we got to keep, it's, it's very important that we keep our mind on the breakthrough, on the vision, on that thing that we're striving for. Because if we don't, we, we will never see the victory. We will never have victory. We have to resist every thought, every boundary, everything that comes against us to try to keep us our thoughts off of the victory. We have to resist those things and keep our minds on the breakthrough that we're expecting to and, happen. And, and this is the, the idea. We will never ever have a breakthrough life until we have a breakthrough mindset. Mm. You, you can never get victory with a defeated mindset. No. It's never going to happen. We will never prosper with a poverty mindset. True. The first key that she's saying here, get your thoughts, words, and actions yeah. in agreement. Breakthrough begins in, in our mind. minds. 
And unless you have a mind that you're going to overcome this, you'll never overcome it. Right. What does scripture say? In Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, my friends, keep your minds on whatever is true, pure, right, holy, friendly, and proper. I want to want to point out this thing here, this part here. It says, keep your minds. And he's speaking to you. He's speaking to me. It's not that God is going to come and zap you and keep your mind on the victory, on the breakthrough. It, it's up to us. Keep your minds on whatever is true, right, and holy. And then it says, don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. Don't ever stop thinking about these things. It says, don't ever stop. Don't want you ever stop. You don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. Holy hip hop. <laughs> don't ever stop. Don't ever stop what? Thinking about what is truly worthwhile. What he's saying is, yeah. stop thinking about uh, thoughts that are unworth. They're not worthwhile. They're not worthwhile. Talking, thinking about worrying. your past. Worrying. It's not worthwhile. No. Thinking about your failures is not worthwhile. Thinking about your problems is not worthwhile. Thinking about worry about the future yeah. is not a worthwhile thought. Mm -mm. Goes, this is what you should focus, focus in on is worthwhile and worthy. Thoughts are worthy of praise. Yes, yes. Start thinking and we, start getting thoughts in your mind that, you know what? I will be healed. That's right. I will overcome. I will prosper. It's going to turn out great. After this coronavirus, I'm going to be stronger than we ever. Better the church is going to be stronger. We're going to be stronger. Yes. We're going to get our minds in the right place. And it's our responsibility it is. to keep our minds. Right. No one else can keep your mind for you. Keep your mind. Your mind is like a garden. Make sure you're keeping it weeded and fertilized and healthy and with good seed in there. And you'll plant it. You'll have to reap a great harvest. Yes, that's so good. Our, it starts with our minds. So and breakthrough then it goes always starts in our mind. In our mind. And then it goes to breakthrough is released through our words. That's the next part of the three. So you should keep your mind and your words and your actions in agreement. Right. So breakthrough is released through, our, through words. our what? Words. Okay. So words can bring in breakthrough or cancel our breakthrough. It's our responsibility to make sure that our words are bringing breakthrough because when you speak, something comes back and it will bring that breakthrough to you if you're speaking about breakthrough or it can cancel it out completely. If you're not speaking breakthrough, if, you, if you're speaking defeat, if you're speaking death, if you're speaking um, anger, any of those problems, well, the this, issue, and, issues and, that and, you and have. The idea is be careful that your words don't betray your vision. Mm. So I have a vision, I have a dream, I have a goal. Make sure your words are in agreement. Give right. us an example of someone that could like betray their own vision. Okay, so I can think of like singles. How many singles do we have? Hey, hi, how are you out there? But sometimes you you can hear singles say, "Oh, I'm gonna, I want to, I have a goal to get married this year, right?" I'm believing then, that God's gonna give me a husband this year. Yeah, Amen. or a wife, a right? Wife. Either way, yeah. And then the next sentence they say, "There's no good men out there." They're all dogs. Well, that, those words do not line up. They're not in agreement. So whatever you're believing for, for a husband, you won't get, you will not get your breakthrough because you're speaking something else. Uh, or uh, I'm believing for a healing. And the next statement is, I don't, I'm not getting any better. Mm. It's getting worse. I think I'm going to die. Wow. Well, we're contradicting ourselves. The vision is healing, but the words are sick. Right, that's true. And you know what's going to happen? We're going to cancel out our breakthrough. In Proverbs 18, 20 and 21 says, make your words good. Make who? You. Make your words good and you will be glad you did. Words can bring death or life. Talk too much and you will eat everything you say. Make your words good. Your words count. Make them good. Make them thoughtful. Make them praiseworthy. And your words can bring, like I said, they bring death or life. It's up to your words what you want to have in your life. And it, it's a, there's an exclamation point on the scriptures. Yes. Words can bring death or what? Life. Be careful that you want a healing like her, uh -huh. but you're speaking sickness or speaking death. Right. 
Our words are going to bring in. If you want love, yeah. start speaking words of love. Yeah. You want to start prospering? Start speaking words of prosperity. You want to be encouraged? Start speaking encouraging words over yes. yourself yes. and others. Because what you're speaking, it's what you're bringing in. So bringing she speaks. In. This is her advice. Make sure your thoughts, your words, and actions are in agreement. Right. So let's go to the, the last statement. All and right. it says this. Breakthrough is finally materialized with our action. Right. So we're thinking breakthrough. We're talking breakthrough. But if there's no action, there will not be any breakthrough. Let's see. Right now, we're getting to the... The, the most important part of this story, we're actually going to see the breakthrough materialize. Up to this point, it's preparation for a breakthrough. Right. Yes, that's true. In Mark 5, 27, it says, she heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. Immediately, After she what? got her breakthrough. After she did, after she touched his robe, after she, after she took an action. Right. So she had a thought. If I touch his robe, I'll be healed. But think about this. If she actually doesn't touch his robe, mm. it just remains a thought. Right. She does, the, the breakthrough doesn't get materialized. Right. And there, be careful that there's not fear trying to stop you from taking particular mm. action. True. Because if you don't take action, there will be no results. Right. I want to get a job. I'm believing for a great job. Really? Make sure you're going out there. Uh, you're spending time Working. filling applications right. on, on, on your computer. Make sure you're knocking on doors. Make sure you're asking. Right. Well, I want, I want, to, start, I want to start serving God. Good. The, the thought is beautiful. But there has to be a day you finally say, I'm done. I repent of my sins. And then you start tuning in every week. And you start getting yourself a Bible. And then you start living for God. But let's right. keep on reading this story. And she had, she had every reason not to press through. There right. was crowds. She was still bleeding up until this point yeah. that she touched his robe. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. And she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? Who actually did something? Who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look around this crowd pressing all around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Mm -hmm. So somebody had done something. So she, she took she, What action. she did was she, did she, she made faith... Faith was working together. Thought out of a vision. Yes. I will be healed. And then she now takes all of that and she, <laughs> faith without action is dead. She right. takes action and now the and power of God is now released yes. into her life. Materialized. After she had faith with action. In an instant. In an it instant. It said immediately. Immediately, right. Immediately. You know what that's called? Breakthrough. Yes. In an instant. Then, After 12 years. Then the frightened woman trembling at the realization of what had just happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over in an instant. Just wow. like that, she got her breakthrough. Just because she pressed through, she took action. She thought it, she spoke it to herself. She actually reached out. Passed through the crowds, passed through all the obstacles, all the challenges, and she did what she had said in her mind. She touched his robe, and in that instant, she was healed, completely healed. If we just listen Breakthrough. to this final advice that she's given, what great advice. Make sure your thoughts, words, and actions are in agreement. Yes. If we could master just this advice, we would master breakthroughs mm. for the rest of our lives. This is where the battles are won, in our thoughts, yes. in our words, in our actions. That's true. If we don't like the way our life is turning out, then we may, might want to start re allowing God to renew our minds through his word. Yes. Or maybe we need to check what we're saying. Right. Maybe our conversation is, is defeated. Right. And you can't have a great life with a defeated conversation. Or maybe, maybe this, we haven't taken action. Yeah. We've just been waiting for Lots, something to happen. Lots of ideas. Say, I want you to get you're Dreams. not saved by your works. But I want you to get this. Jesus is the one that does the saving. 
But what we do is we do what we can do. Yes. We confess Jesus as Lord, and then he saves us. We he repent of our part. sins, and he sets us free and fills us with his Holy Spirit. But there is a partnership. We do what we can do, and God does the rest. That's right. Isn't this a great story? It is. Let's summarize the advice that she's given I'm us. I'm glad she spoke to us today. So advice number one, don't give up before the breakthrough. Don't give up. Advice number two, place your faith in Jesus, the source of your breakthrough. Without Jesus, there's no breakthrough coming. And advice number three, make sure your thoughts, who makes sure? We make sure. Make sure your thoughts, your words, and your actions are all in agreement with the breakthrough. The breakthrough is yours. It's going to happen for well, you. Well, we're going to go back to the statement that we started out with. And today is your day for, breakthrough. for your breakthrough. Yes. It was her day. She claimed that day. She said, this day? This is it. 12 years, 13,810 days have passed. Mm. And this day, it all turned around. Right. Could this be the moment that everything turns around? We're not here to deal with your symptoms. Maybe mm -hmm. the marriage problem, and the addiction, and right. the anger, and, and maybe the hopelessness, and the depression, the fear, the sickness. These are all symptoms. Mm -hmm. But there's a source that can heal us, right. set us free, and give us eternal life. We live a short period of time on this earth, and let's make our lives count. That God can use our lives to spread the knowledge of Jesus Christ yes. throughout the world. Give and how do we glory. spread this knowledge? We come with our constant bleeding problem. Hmm. We come with our pain. We come with our failures, just the way we are. Just, she did it. She came the way she was. And then Jesus lovingly says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. He said, baby, your faith that you have has made you my daughter. I'm your father. Yeah. You're saved. Not only you're saved, you're saved and healed. Wow. Today could be that day. Maybe you've heard about Jesus, but today God is saying, no, I want you to experience me. Experience my love. Experience my freedom. Experience eternal life. There's a life that you can have that you can only find in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And God wants to not only give you, he wants to give you, freedom, breakthrough, but he wants to give you the source. That's his life, eternal life. This life on this earth one day will end and we will go to either one location or the other. One will be with God forever in a place of complete contentment, satisfaction and peace where there's no sickness, there's no pain, there's no challenges, there's no devil. We're going to live an overcoming life forever in heaven with God. Or we could be separated from God forever. And that would be a choice as well. This lady, when she heard about Jesus, she had a choice to make. Am I going to stay in my condition or am I going to place my faith in Jesus Christ and change my life forever? Mm. You have that choice too. Yeah. Because today you're hearing this word and change begins within you. And you got to be willing to say, okay, I need change. I'm not sure if I were to die today. I don't know where I spend eternity. Well, the truth was if she stayed, if she doesn't do all she can just get in his presence. She had to walk there. Mm -hmm. And then she had to dive in. Yeah. Dive in and do what she could. She would remain sick. Right. Matter of fact, we wouldn't even hear this story. No. Nope. It would be no story. She'd be just another sick person. But she has a story to tell because she had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Yes. If you said, Pastor, that's me. You're one prayer away. Today is your day. This lady with the issue of blood, she's there to remind us of God's love. And what he did for her he can do for you. Let's pray. We're a prayer away. Pastor, I'm not sure if I die right now, I go to heaven. Well, let's pray. Let's receive Jesus. He's the source of salvation. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father but through him. Right. All you have to do is be willing to give up your sin. Hmm. Give up your way. Do an exchange to give up your, your, your struggle and give it to the Lord. He'll forgive you. He'll set you free. And he'll give you eternal life. If you're ready to pray that prayer, your job is to confess. That's your action. Repent of your sins and, and confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. His job is to save you. Yeah. Let's pray together. You're one prayer away. She dove in and touched the hem of his garment. You dive in with a simple prayer today. This prayer is a prayer of breakthrough. Yeah. I'm excited for your breakthrough. One prayer away. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For loving me. For loving me. And speaking to me. And speaking to me. Today. Today. 
I've heard this message. I've heard this message. And it's built my faith. And it's built my faith. That today. That today. Is my day. Is my day. Of breakthrough. Of breakthrough. Of success. Of success. Of a turnaround. Of a turnaround. I believe. I believe. You paid the price. You paid the price. For my breakthrough. For my breakthrough. I'm the one that sinned. I'm the one that sinned. And you paid the price. And you paid the price. On the cross. On the cross. By dying for me. By dying for me. The price for sin. The price for sin. Just one sin. Just one sin. Is death. Is death. And you died for me. And you died for me. And then you rose from the dead. And then you rose from the dead. You conquered death. You conquered death. To give me. To give me. Victory. Victory. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. And freedom. And freedom. Jesus. Jesus. I open my heart. I open my heart. I ask you to come in. I ask you to come in. Save me. Save me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Make me new. Make me new. Transform my Transform life. Transform my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the breakthrough. For the breakthrough. I'm receiving now. I'm receiving now. In every area of my in life. In every area of my life. I will serve you. I will serve you. And live for you. And live for you. For the rest of my for life. For the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray. I pray. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it, you know what that means? You're saved. You're saved. And I love what he says. Honey, he told her, daughter, your, your faith, faith has, has made, made you well. well. You're suffering is, is over. over. You're now in breakthrough territory yes. for the rest of your life. And now when they hear your story, your story is going to be a source of breakthrough for so many people as you lead them to your breakthrough, which was me. God bless you. God we bless love you. you. Thanks for tuning yes. in. Lisa, you want to say the last words? Yes. I would just want to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your watch parties. Um, make sure you check in online and let us know who's watching. And we love you. We truly do love you. And communicate with us. Let us know if this message has blessed you. Write it down on the notes. That's some action. Yes. You know, when we do stuff like that, what we're saying is, I'm, I'm actually receiving this. Right, right. So thank you, guys. Let's continue. Next Wednesday, we're going to meet again. We're going to have an amazing time Wednesday night. As a matter of fact, we have Nasser Iqbal this Wednesday. Yes, gonna He's going to give good. his whole testimony. He was in a coma. He wow. was dying. How God healed him. Gotta you don't want to miss Wednesday night. Continue inviting your friends and relatives to tune in and get some hope online. Who doesn't need to hear this story? Right. Everyone needs to hear it, but how are they going to hear it if we don't invite them? And it's real simple. Invite your friends and relatives to tune in in their own living rooms, in their own homes, in their own cars. We do that, and God does the rest. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. Hey, Wade fam. Thanks for tuning in. I pray that you receive the blessing from this message. And if you would like to support this ministry, click the link below. And until then, see you next time.